Hello all, welcome to Prop3D, I'm Chris, and I'd like to start with an apology. I know it's been a little while since I put out a video, but I hope the wait has been well worth it. Essentially, I went back to the drawing board uh, on both filming, because using my daughter and my wife as a camera person wasn't a very sustainable option, and secondly, on props. Before I launched this channel, and I do consider this my very first video, I went back and I went to finish all the props I had sitting on the top of my backlog to make sure I had a whole bunch of videos to share with you guys. And I'd like to go through those props and show you really quickly. If you've dug through the videos on my channel, I'm sure you've seen the earlier version of this before, but this is the much improved E11. I actually took this one out to Fan Expo, sort of on a lark, me and Craig, who's now actually sort of my partner in crime in this, I'll get to him shortly, went to Fan Expo, got a booth and showed this off. And that was a pretty amazing experience. Uh, some guys from a web show, which is absolutely incredibly well produced called Bucketheads, actually came by, borrowed this and used used it for some shots. This model is also a great illustration of what you can expect from this channel going forward. This is uh, quite the journey actually. This is my first very technical model, electronic model. I actually flew all the way to Vegas to go to Battlefield Vegas to take measurements of the real Sterling submachine gun. I got hold of the technical plans of the Sterling. I went basically all out on this to create a realistic full action electronic model has a mode change and it's a little Easter egg. If you hold the selector down for three seconds, oh yeah. Another awesome feature of this, boom, stock folds out. Whoa, dropped it there, stock folds out. Exactly like the real Sterling and I'm gonna show this to the GoPro. It has a proper reticle at the back. So this model here will be one of the first models I'll be doing and releasing, but I'm actually gonna do this as a couple of versions. I'm gonna backtrack this a little bit and make it a mechanical model so you can build this without electronics or with electronics as you, if you want. This is a model that'll be coming two or three videos down the line. I'm gonna do a few easy ones first just to kind of break in the rig and the setup and get used to it. Uh, I think this is one I wanna do properly. I've had quite a journey on this. I think this is super cool. I'd love to share it with you. So next model. Oh, actually I'm gonna put it on the stand because that's gonna get really busy. This prop here, I literally finished about an hour ago. It is a lawgiver from Dread. And this is the one I'd like to introduce Craig to you on. Craig and I over Christmas got to talking about what would be the most over the top, coolest mechanical and electronic model we can possibly make. We made a wish list. I spent about a month putting all of the mechanical parts, the electronic parts, everything I could to essentially create the coolest, most compact model I could handed it over to Craig and said, here, go nuts. Craig has turned this into a masterpiece. I, oh, I can't swear on YouTube. I beep you not. I need a beep button or something. This thing is freaking incredible. And what Craig has done, it is great. I'd like to run you through it really quickly. First off, oh, the LEDs on this side. Now the volume is quite low. This is a very early prototype the login ID failed. So you have to turn it back off, hold down the trigger, turn it on. I don't know if you can see the ammo counter counting there, there, but check this out. High X. Incendiary. Hot shot. To reload it, boom. And check this out, magazine. Whoop, there's a magazine lock there. The magazine, removable, swappable. So again, I just love that action. This thing is coming a few down the line. It is very complicated and there's still a bit of work to go, but I just wanted to show this and introduce Craig. Now this, uh, and 
its counterpart. Oh, I lost its uh, restraining bolt. These are not static models. These are fully autonomous, artificially intelligent driven robots. Inside, we have an NVIDIA Jetson, which is sort of a souped up AI board that runs uh, TensorFlow on its own. To make this easy to use, what I've done is adapted the NVIDIA JetBot kit. So it's pretty much drag and drop into this guy. So I'm gonna share really quickly what it does. That's right, your home alone, R2. R2 is actually a collaboration with my good buddy Elliot in Australia, who's a machine learning expert. He's gonna take what I've done here and make it even more awesome. As to how awesome that is, that is up to Elliot. He's got his own channel, Mission Robots, where he's building very cool, often hardware store parts robots. I highly recommend you check him out. He's just getting started as well. If you can't tell, I have a thing for Star Wars. This is the Mandalorian Blaster. This was a challenge to see if I can get all of these electronics in this T, oops. Uh, whatever happens every time, into this teeny little package. I actually met Paul Lee from Mandalorian and I guess from Boba now as well at uh, Fan Expo. He gave this a, a whirl and signed it for me. So thank you very much, Angry Appa. Much appreciated. Check out his YouTube channel as well. Hilarious unboxings and live streams. Good stuff. To turn it on, just flick the selector down. Addressable LED in the front and this one got the Craig treatment as well. He's actually gone through and redone all of the code for these and he's given it a magazine capacity of 10 and if you hold it down Select fire mode the second fire mode is actually programmable. There's an SD card in it. You can drop any files you want on it. It is completely awesome. Craig is actually setting up a GitHub. Oh, not only setting up, has set up, there's a link in the description to GitHub, where you can get all of this code. Like everything we're doing is completely free. The models, the code, you name it. Hilariously, this one actually has more things in an even smaller space. I really wanted the bolt to be operational and the scope to be real. So all of the electronics actually just follow the inside into here and flick the switch to turn it on. And this actually has a seven LED array at the front. It will have a focuser. I'm almost done this one, not quite. One thing's really cool about this one, it is friggin' loud. I installed a speaker in the back and thought this would make a really good bass cannon. It, uh, it did. It, the first time I fired this thing, it pretty much blew my ears out actually, um, as I went like that. Uh, the volume is actually turned down a little bit now, but yeah, be careful with it. The last individual prop I'd like to show is this one. I'm gonna be especially careful with it because guess who signed it? Oh yeah, William Shatner himself. He came out to Fan Expo when we had the booth. I literally got the first one of these put together about 10 minutes before I went and met him. And this thing, uh, I, I'm being buried with this. I grew up with Star Trek with my dad and uh, I have a huge, huge uh, attachment to the original series. I've actually been working with people on uh, the RPF to make this the most screen accurate phaser you can possibly get off of 3D printing. This is not that version. This is about eight versions back. And I will be releasing this one pretty soon actually, just because it is um, you know, so accessible. It's only like 20 parts. The type one phaser actually comes off if you push the button. Actually, I'm not, sorry. This is my signed version. This is an early prototype. It is going back on. Actually, this still isn't glued on or anything like that. There's a ton of stuff coming. I'm going to try to keep up a pace at one a week after next week. Now I've got my studio set up. I'm going to start easy, ramp up. 
If you have any classic props you want to do, please let me know. Pretty much everything I've done here is by request. This one here is actually a request from my mom. They all light up. They're actually interactive lamps. The, well, hold on. Yeah, here. Uh, yeah, there's an Arduino shoved in the bottom. You can also join me and everyone else I've talked about today on our Discord. There's a link in all of my videos. It's basically a bunch of people getting together, making cool stuff, throwing in requests, beta testing all of these things, and essentially just having a good time when we're all locked in at home. I'll be back in a week. Two at most, I promise. With this guy, this model has been available on my Thingiverse page. I will soon also be posting to my mini factory and to the Prusa as well. But right now, I don't know, Thingiverse is kind of king. Thingiverse, fix your search. Mm. Take care all, have a great day, and I will see you soon.